the mark, got it down to the forward line, and some good work by Doug Kelly in positioning his body well. And uh, interesting for me, anyway, to see uh, Doug Kelly playing in a permanent position down there at full forward. Well, he's played there all year, Kel, and, and has played very well. Uh, Wanderers did move him onto the ball in the second semi-final, but I thought he was found wanting there. Uh, there's a bounce down again. Another good tap to Hay Strutt and goes straight to McCormick. His kick driving the ball up into the forward pocket. Players overrun, it comes out to Harrop. He handballs it out in front of him. Late tackle there, but Burgoyne sharks the ball well. Left foot kick into the back of the pack comes uh, Stephen Long, is it? Stephen Long. And we've got another dust up in the, behind the play here. And... Uh, Hemming, Nothing of any great moment there. And yes, Young sir. Long, Stephen Long, will have his shot at goal no more than 10 metres out on a very slight angle. Actually, a very good mark pulled in down there, Bob. But over the top of, uh, of Rusco, who's not a bad mark himself. It's a full points again. So once again, the scores are level now with Wanderers two straight kicks, two goals, 12 points. To St Mary's, also two straight kicks. Also 12 points, all level and uh, certainly looks like being a great game. Great standard being set by the, both teams here. Once they get the ball away from centre, Bob, they're having a bit of trouble there in the centre until uh, just now we're finding Haystrat and starting to get on top early. Well, this is the difficulty for Wanderers, of course, and obviously that's why they tr uh, tried to use um, Doug Kelly in the ruck in the semi-final, but uh, Haystrat clearly dominating the, the ruck play in this early part of the game. There's the bounce down again, up they go. Hay Stratton again gets it, comes to McCormick. He handballs over his head. In comes Bruno Long. He's caught, dispossessed of the ball. Eventually comes out there to Kadji Dunn. His left-hand handball is not a good one. Thrown off the ball is Russell. And uh, Russell, Graham Russell, that is, the Wanderers wingman, drives the ball in long to centre-half forward. Over the back, Dusty Miller nearly took it. Comes down there to Jackie Taylor. His left foot kick up into the half-forward area. But the umpire has uh, told Taylor to take the kick again. I couldn't pick that one up. Probably missed one behind the play, but a very really good piece of work by umpire Frank Brimson there in defusing the situation and tripping uh, the Wanderers player who was uh, dead set on retaliation. <laughs> There's the long shot at goal. Dropping short, punch free there by St Mary's and out over the boundary line for a throw in right alongside, alongside the Wanderers behind post. Scores locked up here, two goals apiece. There's the throw in. Doug Kelly in ruck against Haystraten. Haystraten once again gets down to McCormick. He can't pick it up. A left foot kick there goes across the face of goals marked by Bruno Long. Playing on quickly with his left foot kick and the ball is out over the boundary line for a throw in in front of the Tiger Brennan Steen here at Gardens Oval. Great crowd here today. Wonderful atmosphere. There's a throw in. Haystraten in front. Miller over the back. Gets it down comes to Bruno Long, he shrugs off a tackle, runs along the boundary line. Ran more than along the boundary line, Bob, well and truly out, but right. not called out, and uh, gets his kick away down to centre wing where Billy Ellis takes the mark in the defensive role for Wanderers. Kicking the ball deep into the forward line as Miller at the fly of the ball and takes the mark and cops one for his trouble from McCormack. No penalty at all, and it'll be Miller to take the kick on the half forward line. He'll be looking for a lead from Doug Kelly down there in the goal square. He's got plenty of attention, and Haystrat has dropped back to uh, add to that as Miller takes plenty of time lining up probably a little bit too far out to score the kick is on its way it's off the side of the boot anyway it's not going to be a score at all in fact it's just over the boundary line on the full very quickly taking the kick as Hay Stratton but his kick was uh, out of bounds and uh, throw in to take place deep into the forward area with Wanderers into attack and the scores locked together at two goals apiece at the boundary throw and it's Hay Stratton and Miller Hay Stratton bundled out of the way Good piece of work down there by Wanderers Russell, pushing the ball out in front of him. Gives a chance there. There's a goal, a snapshot for goal, and it's through the middle. Great yes. goal to Ed Eddie Cabillo. Eddie Cabillo, the time. And it's on again behind, behind the play. The play. Someone had a go at Eddie Cabillo down there. Peter Stennett quickly in to help him out. And now it's developed into a rather nasty little incident with players coming from the other end of the ground. Cusack making a lot of distance, but there's plenty of punches being thrown in there. Umpire Dempsey in there trying to steady things down. Dougie Kelly would like to make it go on a bit longer. He's pushing umpire Brimson aside and diving into the fray. Fortunately, not throwing any leather. And uh, things are quietening down a little bit at last. Certainly getting, getting plenty of action, Bob. Getting back to the game, Eddie Cavillo, the goal kicker there. A great goal to him. Must have just snuck in close to the goal post. And we've seen Wanderers move on to three goals, three straight goals, leading St Mary's two go straight goals. One goal of difference with Wanderers kicking to the city end 
and aided by a very, very slight breeze. It wouldn't be worth much to them at all. No, the breeze wouldn't be, Bob, but uh, traditionally the city end here at the Gardens Oval, or what it used to be called the cemetery end, has always been the scoring end. And uh, that was a good, intelligent piece of play, I thought, by Davy Russell then. Desperation stuff, yes. throwing himself at the ball and pushing it out in front of the pack. And uh, Eddie Cabillo finished it off very well for Wanderers. Oh, that's There's right. There's the bounce down again. McGorman and Haystrat. McGorman gets it this time. Goes straight to Rioli. Quick handball there across to his, one of his teammates who drives it right up there looking for Michael Graham. And Michael Graham takes the mark. Need in the back at the last moment. But uh, he'll get up and take this kick and he'll put it right into the teeth of goal. Probably too far out to score, I'd say. But already Michael Graham making his presence felt in this game a, a very experienced footballer and a, a very talented footballer too there's his kick driving it right up looks all right to me four points on the board to michael graham and saint mary's now four goals two leading wanderers three goals one seven points the difference now in favor of saint mary's and uh, bob we were talking before the game started about the effect that michael graham had on a certain grand final not too long ago in which you were pretty heavily involved yes um Kel, it just shows you the danger that day um, we're referring now to the 78-79 grand final. He had eight kicks and kicked seven goals for the day. And uh, as I was saying just a few seconds ago, a very, very talented player. And Wanderers will be watching or trying to watch him very carefully. There's Back a in. bounce down in the centre again. McGorman gets the tap again. Comes down to Wanganin. Wanganin with a high kick, driving it up to centre half forward. In front was Miller, punched away by St Mary's. In comes uh, Saints player and Willie Rowe drives the ball, switches the play right across to the wing position and Les Miles takes the mark. Handballs across there to his teammate but uh, Wanderers defence standing firm and Byron Hearn is, uh, shovels the ball out over the boundary line for a throw in on that wing position. St Mary's doing well across the centre, Bob. That Miles is another player who uh, is doing well at this stage and uh, I think St Mary's are getting uh, the advantage of winning across the centre line and here's another chance for Miles but he can't pick it up, scoops it out and in fact it goes straight to McGorman who gets his kick away but Bruno Long first to the ball, kicks it off the ground, sockers it uh, to Russ McGorman, he gets the handball out, uh, played on very quickly by Cabillo. He gets the ball down onto the half forward line, it quickly bounced back over the head of the pack and then over the boundary line for a throw in to take place, right half forward line with St Mary's into attack and leading by seven points. Yes, 4-2 to 3-1 the score at Gardens Oval now. Saints in front, throw in there. McGorman and Haystraten. Haystraten rucked unchanged in this quarter so far. Ball comes down to Nicolaitis. He's dispossessed of the ball and it comes over the boundary line for a throw in only 10 yards further around from the previous one. I don't envy the task of Nicolaitis trying to keep Graham out, but so far he's sticking to him pretty well. You have to stick like glue too. There's the throw in again. Comes to Wanganee. Dave Russell comes in, tries to tap it out. Eventually comes to Young uh, Long again, Johnny Long. He gives a quick handball across to Ted Liddy. Ted Liddy looking for Michael Graham, but uh, the ball goes out over the boundary line for a throw in on the right full forward flank for St Mary. Saints kicking to the high school end of the Gardens Oval. Normal thing, Bob. Open your mouth and then you find Michael Graham 35 yards away. Yes, typical Graham. There it is, McGorman and Haystraten. Great thump away there by Haystraten. Comes to Harrop. Harrop with a left hand handball. Nicolaitis can't pick it up. Eventually, he knocks it forward across the uh, boundary line, is it? Yes, for a, another throw in right in front of the scoreboard and just repeating those scores. St Mary's leading by seven points 4 2 to Wanderers 3 1. Not much in the way of a breeze, uh, although what there is of it, Wanderers have the advantage of in this first term as the ball is thrown in on St Mary's half-forward line. Hey Stratton winning the tap, but the chance is here for Wanderers to clear the ball away, and they'll do so. In possession Filler. is Peter Filler. Gets the ball down towards the half-forward line where Dusty Miller had first chance, couldn't take the mark, and it's cleared away. Down towards the half-forward line by Dunn. Punched away cleverly. Comes down to ground. Here's a chance now for St Mary's. Again, it's uh, Johnny Long in the thick of things with a good pass across the ground to Willie Rowe. Not sure what to do is Willie Rowe. The lead was too early from Cusack. He has to go back and take the big kick, which he does to perfection. Right down towards a full forward area. Haystraten in front. Hemming coming from behind. Neither of them able to get the ball to ground. And the free kick will go the way of uh, Wanderers. Mahaffey it is. Mahaffey. Peter, Peter Mahaffey on the half back line now for Wanderers. Mahaffey relieving the pressure. And there's plenty of it on Wanderers at the moment. There's the kick towards the centre of the ground. It's dropping well short. And Willie Rowe well in front and taking the ball unopposed right in the centre of the ground. Saints centre line and half back line seems to be standing strong at the moment. Cool. Uh, plenty of talent across there and they're, 
There's that kick from Willie Rowe, a good 70 or 80 metres, punched away there from Hemming by Harrop. In front is Nicolaitis. His hurried kick is out towards the wing possession who see, uh, where we see Teddy Liddy in front and his hurried kick is out over the boundary line on the full and the relieving free kick will be taken by Nicolaitis. And good half. chasing from Wanderers Hearn over there, uh, making up yards to catch up to Liddy and that takes some doing. There's the relieving ki free kick for Wanderers by uh, Nicolaitis down towards the centre of the ground where Taylor had every chance to mark, couldn't do so. The ball now going forward through Phillip. He gets it out towards the half-forward line. There's no one at home. First to the ball will be Hill of St. Mary's. He thumps it down towards Miles, who's got away again. Miles, with uh, plenty of time to steady, takes one bounce and then lines up the goal and puts it right into the goal square. Haystraten the chance and has taken the mark. A great piece of play by St. Mary's. Miles to put the ball right into the goal square where Haystraten capped it off with a spectacular fly. Yes, uh, he had the, the ride there too, Kill The only... Wanderers player anywhere near it was uh, Joe Jeffries and and the Hay Stratton would be at least uh, a foot and a half taller than him. Well, Sydney be full points, no problem here to uh, Hay Stratton, although we over the years have come to see some uh, some classics from Hay Stratton, but that one's no problem. Straight through the middle to take St Mary's now along to 5-2, 32, leading Wanderers 3-1, 19. And uh, certainly the latter half of this first quarter has been all St Mary's and as Bob mentioned, I would suggest it's mainly uh, due to the, the ascendancy across the centre, right across the centre line. In fact, Willie Rowe doing very well. Miles and Johnny Long really killing their opponents in the centre of the ground. And as Bob mentioned, also the half-back line going very well for St Mary's. Seems to me, Kel, that uh, Wanderers are going to have to watch Miles very carefully. He, he's getting away and creating that loose man, which is uh, driving the ball into the forward line for Saints repeatedly in this last 10 minutes. There's the bounce down. It goes Wanderers' way, uh, eventually shoveled out there by Wanganeen, and uh, he's caught, or not caught, pushed in the back. The umpire's ruled, and he'll get a free kick just forward of the centre position. Must no one to kick it to. There's his kick, a driving kick right up into the forward area, over the back of the packet. It's taken by Doug Kelly. His hurried kick is, uh, gains no ground at all, and there's a big scrimmage of players, and there's another bounce down. Midway between half forward and full forward, Wanderers into the ground. There's the bounce down. Up goes Kelly. No one gets a decisive tap. Kelly sharks his own knock. Comes down there to Athanasia. No, it's Hill rather. Hill with a left foot kick. Misdirected and, and it's gone straight to John Rafferty, who would have every chance of kicking this goal. He'd be no more than 55 metres out on a very, very slight angle. And a badly needed goal to Wanderers at this stage of the game, Kel. Certainly, Bob, and Rafferty, uh, a very reliable kick of the football, and he would be a good chance of putting this through. He's got Doug Kelly in the square if it drops just short. And in fact, the only problem I can see down there for Wanderers is if it does drop short, although they've got Kelly there, there's no one to pick up crumbs. They expect him to kick it, I think. And there it is, it's through. Good kick from Rafferty. And a good answer by Wanderers, and they need more of that. Uh, Rafferty very fortunate to get that misdirected kick out of the back line from Hill, fell straight into his arms, he, the least he expected. Took the mark and has made full use of that opportunity by putting another goal. Wanderers fourth on the board. They, they, they're 4-1 now, trailing St. Mary's five goals too, and we're back to seven points of the difference. Seems to me at the moment, Cole, that the main difference between the two teams is that when Saints go forward, they have a, a little bit more skill. They drive the ball forward with skill where Wanderers are doing it with sheer weight of numbers and bullocky work. Ross McGorman in the ruck there, opposed to Dunn. The ball coming down St Mary's way where uh, Nicolaitis left it behind and that's given the chance for St Mary's Miles. He picks it up, the pass is too long this time for Hemming and hits Harrop right on the chest. He was going to be in trouble if the pass was a good one. He comes away quickly now, down to Leskovic. Leskovic taking the mark safely and plays on now with a kick down towards centre-half forward. Miller's down there and opposed to Hill and there's the siren now for a quarter time and uh, I think Bob we could say that the first quarter has been uh, St Mary's uh, they kicked against a very slight breeze and lead 5-2, 32 to Wanderers 4-1, 25, you have the goal kickers Bob? Yes, goal kickers quickly for St Mary's Mi uh, singles to Michael Graham Stephen Long, Jack McCormick, Les Miles and Hans Hay Stratton whilst for Wanderers, Doug Kelly won Rafferty won, Peter, uh, sorry Eddie Cabello won and Peter Stennett won So I think Bob the story is the message out the warning for Wanderers is that they've got to look across that centre line, That's right. centre line line is where uh, St Mary's have been taking the ball away. Miles and Long, the particularly dangerous players, and uh, Steve Abala will be doing well to find some of the top those players. Yes, I'm sure his uh, thinking cap is on there at the moment. Territory footy from the vault is thanks to these valued partners. 
We understand that in the Territory can take a little longer than a trip down south. So we'll make sure your car is insured whether you're driving it or someone else. Or you. Or someone else. Or you. Or someone else. Yep, you get the picture. And we get it too, because we're here too. TIO Comprehensive Car Insurance. We're for Territorians and their mates. Time to escape, cause I'm in need of warmer weather. Sail upon the stream to find there's someplace better. And I'm going far and wide. Ooh. Great Northern Brewing Co. The beer from up here. before making an investment decision. The time to kickstart your business is now. Get your message across with the experienced local TV production team at Kick Digital. Cost effective, rapid turnaround, exceptional service. Kick Digital, television production, energised. Here at the Gardens Oval for the start of the second quarter in which St Mary's will be kicking towards the city end and they lead at the moment 5-2-32 to Wanderers 4-1-25. And Wanderers now have to be very careful that St Mary's don't give them the slip and get away with a winning margin by half time. I think that's the big danger, Bob. Yes, Kel. They're, they're missing the, that key centre half forward position. They just can't get the ball through the forward line effectively. Way from the centre, the first chance is to Liddy. He can't take it away. And now it's uh, Wanderers first into attack, driving the ball down to the forward line in front, though, and taking the mark well is the full back for St Mary's in Hill. Hill steadies things down, goes wide. Out there looking for and finding Miles getting away again to take the mark in front of Filler as he's done throughout the first quarter. He goes in with a short pass. It doesn't really achieve much here in towards the centre of the ground. Now it goes to Rioli and he's got the chance to get things moving. He's got uh, plenty of leads on offer, but he goes straight down the ground. First chance was there for Wanderers. Couldn't take it. Hemming with the handball out towards uh, Long. Stephen Long, that was, trying to get the ball away. Comes to Harrop. He's lost it. Comes back to Stephen Long. It'll snap towards goal. It's going to be offline. In fact, it's out of bounds on the full, and the relieving free kick will go to St. Two Wanderers down in their back pocket and will be taken by Robert Leskovic. Wanderers still a little bit hesitant, I feel, Kel. Cool. They're not uh, playing their fluent football, and whereas Saints are straight into stride immediately. They've got some quick footed people out there, the St. Mary's camp. A lot of their small fleet are very, very quick. There's Hay Stratton flying high, couldn't bring the ball to ground, and it's a stack on the mill. Umpire Brimson with no alternative but to move in and bounce and we're on the half forward line with St Mary's into attack and leading at this stage by seven points there's the bounce in front Wanderers getting the ball to the ground comes out towards Michael Graham he leaves it behind Nikolaitis couldn't get it out came out to Leskovic he's got it on to Rafferty who's in trouble gets the handball away but it'll come St Mary's way kicked off the ground in danger by Rafferty and the free kick going against him as umpire Dempsey right on the spot and the free kick will be taken by Rioli in the centre of the ground. He'll put St Mary's into attack. In fact, it goes quickly now with the kick right down towards the full forward area. Hasn't found the big men, but the ball's off hands and coming out towards them now. Here's a chance for Wanderers to clear the ball away as uh, Smith gets it across to Harrop, who's too quick and gets his kick away right down towards the wing, and it's Stennett out here on the centre wing. Don't know what he's doing out there, Bob. Might have been a move off put from Abala. He's probably come down the ground a bit. Uh, desperate to get a kick, I'd say, Kill. Cool. He's only had one, but he made full use of that. There's the throw-in. It comes back towards Hay Stratton. He's bundled out of the way, and there's a chance for Rafferty. Slow to pick it up, but eventually gets a kick away, but he's paid for taking that time and picking it up. A hurried kick goes straight to Rioli. Rioli with the handball across now. Down the ground comes St Mary's through Anastasia. He gets his kick down towards half-forward. Stephen Long with a big fly, but Johnny Long's picked up the crumbs and got it out to Miles. He would have taken a mark, except that he slipped at the vital moment. In front in the race for the ball was all Wanderers but they've lost it and again it's Johnny Long picking the ball up giving it across to Willie Rowe Willie Rowe with a very badly directed kick a very hurried kick slams it onto the boot hoping for the best and uh, the best didn't come it's gone out of bounds on the full and the relieving free kick by Jeff Harrop of Wanderers Wanderers having uh, a bit of problem in the back pocket there too 
uh, Kel, Joe Jeffries has uh, given away a few frees and uh, maybe the nerves have got the better of him at the moment. Here he is again, Johnny Long leading in the race for the ball. He'll beat two Wanderers players if he gets away this time. Unfortunately, he's lost it. It's going to come back the way of Wanderers. They get it. They're fumbling around with the ball down there. Something shocking. Uh, the uh, Wanderers camp and Billy Ellis making a very fundamental error there. Handballing straight to, to the St Mary's player. Michael Graham in front now, tapping it along in front of him. He'll get bundled. He didn't. Got the ball back in towards uh, Burgoyne. Burgoyne on the left foot with a snapshot for goal. It's not a bad looking kick, but it's across the face of goal. And it's out of bounds on, on the, the full. Free kick and a relieving free kick again by Harrop. But Harrop, uh, one of the few defenders down there at the moment, doing a lot of work. And uh, he's got his problems. Yes, uh, Harrop needing a little bit of room to move to kick the ball. There's his kick coming up towards the halfback flank. In front there, a good mark taken by the Wanderers player in David Smith. Been quiet player for them. There's his kick going up to the centre of the ground, looking for Miller. Miller from behind takes the mark. Athanasia all over the top of him. Miller using his uh, extra height there to advantage. High kick going up towards centre half forward area. In front, Kelly pushed out of the way there by Hill. Punch free Wanderers there. Wanderers must score here. Bob was four of them leading in the race here. Stennett's the one with the shot. Offline though, through for another minor score. Two Wanderers. They move on to four goals, two. Trailing St Mary's, five goals, two. Six points the difference in the 81-82 grand final here at Gardens Oval. Well, they did score, Bob, but they had four of them leading in the race when the ball hit the ground behind the pack then and uh, should have been able to help each other out and get right onto the goal line to kick that one as the kick comes in down towards the centre of the ground and it's uh, St Mary's through Willie Rowe. He's in trouble though, gets the handball away now. Anastasia driving the ball down to the ground. Out wide he goes, looking for Long, but it's punched away from him. Uh, Cusack that was, and the ball forced over the boundary line by Wanderers Robert Leskovec. And uh, the throw in to take place now on the half forward line for St Mary's back into attack quickly swinging the ball from one end of the ground to the other and it's Miller it's uh, Smith in front who gets the tap for Wanderers but there's no one there to pick it up for him and over the boundary line for another throw in still on the St Mary's half forward line right hand side of the ground right in front of the Tiger Brennan stand big punch from uh, Hay Stratton and an equally big punch coming back uh, over the boundary line by Peter Mahaffey of the Wanderers camp and we've not got anywhere the ball still to be thrown in in front of the Tiger Brennan stand with St Mary's into attack and leading at this stage by three points and and holding the initiative too Kel I'd say at this stage there's the throwing tap down by Wanderers Smith goes straight to McCormick McCormick's left foot kick goes right up to the teeth of goal bounces over the back of the pack and it's been rushed through for a minor score to St Mary's moving them on to five goals three leading Wanderers four goals two Harrop the acting captain of Wanderers. There's his short pass out there to the halfback flank. Uh, looking for Mahaffey. He's found him. Should have played on, I thought, from there. But Mahaffey's gone back. There's his kick. High kick going right up over the wing position. From behind, it's Byron Hearn. He tries to punch the ball down. Eventually comes there to St Mary's, who clear it back up towards centre-half forward. Leading the race for the ball is Michael Graham. He, uh, he punches it down cleverly to Stephen Long. He gives it across to Cusack. Cusack with a long, high kick. But it's misdirected also and through for another minor score, taking St Mary's on to five goals four, leading Wanderers four goals two. Well, I think St Mary's uh, have wasted a few opportunities early in this second quarter. They've had the ball in their forward line for all but uh, 30 seconds of this quarter and as yet haven't goal. Well, as I said, Kel, I thought that uh, St Mary's are holding the initiative, but they're just not... Uh, t taking full advantage of it as you said and then we've seen a miss kick there by Harrop luckily off the side of his boot uh, he slipped as he kicked it, it was marked by Joe Jeffries, his kick has gone up towards the wing position, almost marked by Filler in fact, umpire Dempsey says he did mark it and he'll have uh, take his free kick on the wing position He'd be one of the players that Wanderers are looking for a bit more from I suggest Bob? Yes, they, they need him to fire badly the ball goes over the back of the pack there, Rioli caught in possession and uh, a very, very quick decision given against Rioli then for holding the ball and the free kick will be going to Kevin Wanganine. Wanganine almost at the true centre-half forward position. Wanderers trailing by eight points. There's his short pass there looking for Rafferty. Rafferty and Doug Kelly collide. The ball goes on. It's on the, the boundary line on the half-forward flank and the umpire has seen 
a free and it's going against St Mary's as was yeah. behind the play I didn't see Hill, Hill it was uh, holding uh, <coughs> McGorman I think it is or Rafferty back out of the play there's his uh, kick now in towards a good lead from Stennett who's uh, had a second grab and been paid the mark uh, I was going to mention Bob that uh, just a moment ago bad work there by Rafferty and chopping in in front of uh, the leading Doug Kelly who had the ball and was knocked over ball and all by his own player in Rafferty but uh, Wanderer still with a chance with this mark from a very good pass taken by Stennett. Stennett lining them up. He's an accurate kick. It looks good. Four points on the board and Wanderers back in front now. Wanderers five goals, two. Sorry, two points down now. And uh, as the camera tells you the story, you can see that uh, there's a little bit of tension in this game still. Wanderers uh, have kicked a goal and will go to five. Go there's a boot gone in there and uh, that's not going to be a very popular decision. Rioli uh, has the offender in a headlock. So, <laughs> feelings running pretty high at the moment. If you could say so, Bob. Uh, there's a lot of tension in this game. Two points of difference at the moment. St Mary's still hanging on, but uh, probably should be well in front. And uh, really not very happy uh, with some of the uh, antics in there, but it's been cooled down eventually. Umpire Dempsey in there to sort things out. I don't think uh, the umpires quite remember where the ball was going then. What, what are they... Doing? Are they uh, well, taking the it back to the centre? Or? I think the goal's gone on the scoreboard, so it should be back in the centre once we get things under control here, Bob. But uh, a couple of people out there not too happy, and one of them is Eddie Cabillo. I think uh, Eddie's got one for his trouble in amongst that, Millie, and uh, I think uh, he'll probably ask for that. Uh, yes, it was silly play. I, I didn't see what started it, but uh, obviously uh, hot headedness, and I think uh, the umpire, sorry, the coach's decision is right here. He's taking him off, and uh, quite deservedly so, I'd say. I won't lose anything with David Russell coming onto the ground. He's a great ball winner, uh, scrapper on the ground, and uh, likes to, to push the ball out in front, and anyone who knows that should be feeding off him when he's diving in underneath the, uh, the pack trying to force the ball out. Back in the centre of the ground, it's Hay Stratton with a good tap. And unfortunately for St Mary's, it couldn't be gathered by uh, McCormick, but he got the kick, the punch away down the ground. Here's Wanderers in charge now. There's three of them here. Russell picks it up, gets it onto his right foot, down towards Dougie Kelly, who's a bit early with the bump. Could have been penalised, but wasn't. Rioli coming out with the ball for St Mary's, charking it well off the back of the pack, kicking up towards centre wing where the Wanderers camp lead in the race for the ball a, a great diving effort by Mahaffey couldn't pull the mark in and the ball forced over the boundary line throw in to take place right in front of our commentary position here with Hay Stratton doing battle against Smith Smith winning the tap with a good tap down to Wonganin who's been quiet he gets it down towards Kelly who's from behind got a hand to it couldn't gather it in for once uh, we see the St Mary's back line overrun the ball chance now forced in it couldn't do anything with it forced over the boundary line and a throw in will take place in the left full forward pocket with Wanderers into attack trailing at this stage by two points and I suggest perhaps somewhat fortunate to be that close as uh, St Mary's have wasted a few opportunities. There's the throw in now. Kelly gathers in well and then the kick isn't too good and it's way off line and out of bounds on the full. I think that's what you call a true snapshot kill. Way off balance, threw the ball onto the boot and uh, the predictable result came where it went uh, off the side and over the boundary line out of bounds on the full. St Mary's leading here five goals for 34 points. Leading Wanderers 5 2 32. Two points of difference. There's Hill's relieving kick coming up to the halfback flank from behind. Filler. This is the filler that Wanderers will be looking to see. The high flying filler taking the big marks and the long kicks, driving that ball into their forward line all the time. Well, to now, Bob, you could only say that he's had a bath from miles in the centre of the ground. I read in the, the uh, previews of the game in the press that they were expected to play wide of each other. They've certainly done that. We've seen plenty of miles, but we hadn't until now seen much of filler. Oh, well, if he pa he's paid the mark, Bob, uh, th for my money, uh, 30 seconds after the ball was already marked, Dougie Kelly's come in and picked that one. Well, not 30 seconds, Kelly, well, split I'd, second. And I'd... I stick to my middle name. <laughs> but uh, I, I would say that uh, a very, very lucky decision there, two Wanderers. Kelly stole the ball. That's very well put, Bob, and uh, full points should be the result of this, and uh, Wanderers will hit the front uh, if uh, Kelly can make sure of this one. And uh, they'll be fairly happy about this, I should suggest. Kelly taking plenty of time. Hasn't had a lot of opportunities today and hasn't had a lot of support down forward. Stennett's chipped in for a couple of goals, but... There's six really Wanderers there players on the mark, Kill Six Wanderers... Uh, sorry, St Mary's players on the mark. It's not bad. It didn't stop Dougie Kelly, though. That's <laughs> one that couldn't have dissected the goals any cleaner. Full points on the board to Dougie Kelly and a very fortunate goal to the Wanderers camp. And Wanderers now hit the front. So that's the third time today that we've seen the lead change hands and Wanderers now 6-2, 38 
leading St Mary's 5-4, 34. Four points the difference in favour of Wanderers. And uh, they've come back well after being eclipsed in the early part of this quarter, Bob. And uh, St Mary's will maybe at half-time ruin the fact that they didn't put more goals on the board early. That's right. Uh, once again, though, Kelly, you see the advantage of the big mark from Filler. The long high kick into Kelly, even though it was a disputed mark, as far as we're concerned, the, he uh, took advantage of it and uh, got the six points. He There's did look good doing it. Bob. Oh, yes, it was a great effort. Hey, Stratton with a big air swing. He missed it all together. And uh, Wanganin picks up the crumbs, gets it down forward. It's coming out towards Stennett eventually. He's in trouble, gets a handball across the ground to Kevin Wanganin, oh. who gathered it up well and got the handball away. There's a chance for Wanderers now. Miller with the handball out, and there's a snapshot for goal offline. And uh, one point only the result as... Uh, Wonderful pick up from Wanganin then. Wanganin, yes, a, a very, very courageous effort in ducking the head, picking the ball up, got it out well. Unfortunately for Wanderers, not able to score with the, with the snapshot for goal. But it was a good attempt from Peter Mahaffey under plenty of pressure. And uh, Wanderers now 6-3, 39, leading St Mary's 5-4, 34 by 5 points. And we're back in the centre of the ground with Rafferty driving Wanderers into attack. They've got a new lease of life from somewhere. Bob, it's uh, in front getting shoved and pushed was uh, Kelly, couldn't handle the ball, Bruno Long's lost it, comes back to Hill, Hill for St Mary's, driving it out, it comes straight into the arms of Wanderers, Graham Russell on the half forward line, Stennett's on his own in the goal square, there's not a soul within yards of him. He could just about kick this kill. It'll be a good kick if he does, he's run around the man on the mark, on the left foot and it's coming back nicely, there's going to be a free kick paid down the ground I think. Uh, I think it might have been, went through did it Bob, I think you'd have to come back. No, and no, it, it was, uh, Doug Kelly was trying to mark the ball oh, right. In that case, we're going to see a free kick paid right down the ground. But it'll be a very acute angle. He'll sit him uh, right alongside the point post, I'm sure. How long will he stay there, Bob? Uh, about one-fifth of a second, I'd <laughs> say, Kill. Yeah, Dougie Kelly, a very experienced player, and you can expect that uh, he won't be kicking from anywhere near as acute as angle as Frank Brimson's trying to bring him round onto now. In fact, he's not taking a lot of notice of coming round at all. Taking plenty of time, as he always does. Gee, this would be an important goal, Bob, if uh, Wanderers can kick this one. A wonderful comeback. I thought they were down a bit, Kel, but uh, they've come back well in this last few minutes. He's kicked it, I think. No mistakes there. Doug Great Kelly's kick. third goal. Three goals to Kelly, two in the last two minutes, and Wanderers march on. Seven goals, three, leading St Mary's, five goals, four, and it must be remembered, Kel, that uh, Wanderers are kicking to the high school end of the ground, which is generally considered to be the non-scoring end. Yes, well, we have to say that uh, today the, the St Mary's outscored Wanderers kicking towards that high school end in the first quarter, and now we've got Wanderers coming back very strongly after being well outclassed in the early part of this quarter, and uh, they've got a new lease of life on here somewhere. They've grabbed a couple of opportunities. Bad mistake by Hay Stratton in the centre of the ground, I think, started that one. He took a big swing at the ball. He loves to go for that big punch. He missed it completely. Wanganin picked it up, and from then on it was in the forward line until eventually the free kick paid down the ground saw uh, Kelly put through a very good goal and a very timely one. In fact, here's Rafferty now in leading with the race of the ball. Can't pick it up. In fact, he should have left it for Billy Ellis. He couldn't pick it up either. Michael Graham's in there putting pressure on. The ball punched along the ground and it comes out now. Wanderers clearing away through Kevin Wanganin again. And we hadn't seen him in this first quarter. Now he's coming to the game. Here's Hearn, his first kick, I think, for the day. Down towards the full forward area. Uh, in front, I think, was Dusty Miller. And I'm not sure what uh, umpire Dempsey's paid here. The whistle's gone. I think he's going to bounce the ball. Perhaps couldn't decide who had the first grab, but I didn't think anyone got enough grab of it. I didn't for even a, think it was a disputed for a bounce at mark. all. But there we go. Uh, umpire Dempsey bouncing the ball. Two St Mary's players flying against each other. No Wanderers man flying for the ball. It's shoveled out of the pack with a throw. It's going to work out all right for St Mary's as it comes away now. Uh, through Rioli, up wide to Willie Rowe, who's got yards. He's off. Gets the short pass away. He's looking for Miles, who's been quieter this quarter. He's lost that one too, and it's coming away through uh, Russell. It is again down the along the boundary line towards McGorman who couldn't gather it at the first attempt but he's got Stennett in support gives it to Stennett who's in trouble gives it back to McGorman he's in trouble also and the kick is half smothered but it comes back towards Wanganin he's bustled out of the way a good hip and shoulder there Courageous. Comes, comes back out though Wanderers still a chance now Miller's gathered it he's had a snap with the left foot it's right across the face of goals Dougie Kelly's got the set and takes the mark that was a good mark Bobby he's, uh, that ball was floating around all over the place Kelly had to sit but he had to work for it but uh, there's the secret again Kill, drive that ball in high and long into Kelly and they've got every chance in the world and this is what's uh, happening at the moment and Wanderers are taking full advantage of it and of course uh, this is a very badly needed goal as far as Wanderers are concerned. Kelly a great spearhead so far uh, there Bob not, not only is he, is he getting the ball but he's certainly making full use of every kick that he's had. Here he is again now plenty of time and the kick off the, uh, side. Off the side this time. 
and a minor score only the result but Wanderers will be happy enough about that to keep the ball up in their forward line they'd love to go in at half time with a couple of goal break here and uh, St Mary's will be uh, a little bit perplexed because uh, I would suggest that until now anyway they've had the majority of play it's, they've looked uh, the better team up to the last the five or ten minutes yes we're at the 17 minute mark of this second quarter now and the scoreboard showing Wanderers seven goals for 46 points leading St Mary's 5-4 Still now, points. looking to somewhere to go. There's his kick now, out wide. Stennett is there against uh, two St Mary's players. At ball at the back of the pack. Comes down back to Stennett now. His handball is going to put his players under trouble, but very cleverly tapped out by Mahaffey. Gathered in, Wanderers with a shot for goal, and it's, uh, it's hit the post. Oh, a great attempt for goal there by uh, Wanderers. Davy Russell and a very intelligent piece of play by Peter Mahaffey with a two-handed push, shoved the ball out into the path of the oncoming Davy Russell. His kick for goal looked good. But it's hit the post. Bad luck Wanderers and bad luck Davy Russell, but another point on the board. Takes them along to 7-5-47 as Hill goes the short pass to find Cusack. David Cusack, uh, short of centre-half back, driving St Mary's out of their uh, defensive area. Down to the centre of the ground. Michael Graham's a long way up the ground. Couldn't pick it up. Comes down the back of the pack. Leading in the race to the ball was Liddy, but well done. Billy Ellis of Wanderers gathers it, drives it back long. The chance is here for St Mary's. They punch the ball away. Comes towards McGorman. McGorman were beaten for it comes out to Michael Graham, taps it on, but taps it straight to Russell. Russell now, four Wanderers, driving the ball long. Out of the way is bustled uh, Kelly, and the mark, I think, has been paid in defence to the fullback for St Mary's in Hill. Hill's under plenty of pressure. He goes a short pass, and there's a man who isn't under any pressure at all, miles away from the opposition, Michael Anastasia. He gets the kick away to, to the uh, centre wing position where David Cusack will take the mark. Goes a short pass, looking for Hemming. Hemming on the chest, and that's a big chest uh, for the ball to hit. And it sits there quite comfortably. He's a big man. Reminds me of George Butler, fullback for Darwin, of years ago. Had a very serious knee. Was that big? <laughs> very serious knee operation. This boy just before Christmas. There's his kick. Well, it's, it's a, a beauty too. Kick. Just off, is it? Just off line and through for a minor score. St Mary's 5-5 now, 35. Trailing Wanderers 7-5, 47, 12 points the difference in favour of Wanderers and there'll be a few people in the St Mary's camp scratching their head trying to work out how that's happened. Kicking against the breeze too. There's Harrop's kick off. It's a prodigious one against the breeze. Right up into the centre square it goes. Filler has oh, been, been paid. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very well, much. I think there might be a couple, very, very a couple of dollars on the Wanderers decision. camp today. There's the play on handball across to Nicolaitis. Nicolaitis driving the ball up to the half forward flank for Wanderers. Punched down by Saints. It comes straight down to Hearn. Hearn with a quick handball across to Kevin Wonganin. Running free at goal. There's his shot. And I think you can tell by the crowd result. Not a bad result there for uh, the Wanderers camp. And Kevin Wonganin, who uh, was hardly sighted in the first quarter, has set Wanderers alight in the second quarter. Been all over the ground, chipping in and there. He caps off some very good work uh, by Hearn, who's also been quiet. He's come into the game in this second quarter. And that was a very intelligent handball and capped off beautifully by Kevin Wonganin. Uh, a, bit of a, a bit of a problem down there for St Mary's in that Bruno Long and Michael Anastasia both flew for the ball and punched it away from each other and there wasn't the Wanderers man within Cooey. And they knocked each other to the ground too cool. Here's the ball back in the centre now. Hay Stratton back in ruck for St Mary's. He gets a tap unopposed. Comes down to Long who seems to be on the ball now. He gives a handball across to Filler. Filler with a short pass up there. Comes down to Athanasia. Athanasia with a hurry kick. Relieves the pressure temporarily for Saints. It comes out towards Miles. Miles in front. The ball's punched away. But uh, the umpire Dempsey says, you'll kick Miles. Well, gee, it's important to get a grab at the ball today, Bob. It That's seems to be all you've got to do. And the mark is right. paid. There it is down towards the uh, half-forward line for St Mary's. But in front and uh, making good use of his body is David Smith of Wanderers. And he's been paid the free kick for interference. And here he is now driving the kick back towards the centre of the ground. There's no one at home for Wanderers at all. Four St Mary's players standing around watching Miles take the mark as he goes on with a short pass in the direction of McKillop, uh, Mc McCormick. McCormack, I keep calling him McKillop, there he is now, driving across towards Hemming, but it's too long for him, over the back of the pack, it's all Wanderers, literally, Billy Ellis tapping it away, but Stephen Long will be first to the ball, shepherded, or attempted shepherd by Johnny Long, and that's like trying to stop a bulldozer with a match, and there he is kicking it out now, over across the half forward line it comes, Wanderers bringing the ball away, Hearn with a hurried kick, along the wing, Davy Russell first chance, Went to ground. Another Wanderers player diving in to help out, but they've lost the ball, and it's Bruno Long across to Michael Graham. Mr. Michael Magic. Graham. Oh, the bounce didn't favour him too well. He's got it away now. Across to Liddy, and on again to Willie Rowe. Willie Rowe at centre-half forward could kick it from there if he gets onto it. Good-looking snap, but it's just offline. Through for a minor score only. And St Mary's uh, move along now. I think that's five goals, 6.36. Trailing Wanderers, 8.5.53. 
Good pressure there by the Wanderers backman, though. They kept Willie Rowe under pressure all the time. He, he was never allowed to steady down and get a set shot at the goal. Harrop yeah. giving the ball out now, down towards the half-back line. Over the top, Nicolaitis with the big fist. At the back of the pack there, first chance will be for Davy Russell, but couldn't beat the ball over the boundary line. And the throw-in will take place on the far side of the ground, centre wing. In the ruck for St Mary's will be Hans Haystraten. He'll be opposed by Ross McGorman. Haystraten winning the tap clearly, but it comes down towards Davy Russell for Wanderers. He's on top of the ball, trying to get it out. Uh, in fact, he's been penalised for not trying to get it out, as, as, as I've said that he was. But uh, the free kick going St Mary's way. They found Miles with the short pass. And uh, Miles at centre-half forward, right on the edge of the square. Driving the ball long. Oh, beautiful kick. A beautiful torpedo punt right down to the full forward area. And a good mark taken down there. Great mark uh, for St. Mary's. And a pass back to try and improve the angle a bit to Stephen Long. Uh, perhaps a good piece of play. A good mark by Dunn. And the pass has certainly improved the angle. And uh, they haven't lost all that much in the way of ground either. Well, if he kicks the goal, Kill, it was a great piece of play. But uh, he's increased the distance by possibly 20 metres or so. And here we see young Long... Stephen Long have his shot at goal. It looks close. In and the it's post. hit the post. That's one at either end. That squares that situation. One poster each. And bad luck for St Mary's. And uh, bad luck for Dunn because uh, had that come off, uh, they'd have talked about a great little piece of play as it was. They think why didn't have the shot himself. But it's Harrop to take the kick out again for Wanderers. And once again, a towering kick down towards the centre of the ground. It's gone as high as it has long. And that's a long, long way as Miles at the back of the pack picks it up. Gets a hurried left foot kick in down towards Rowe. It's punched away from him. Coming down, Nicolaitis leading in the race to the ball. He's got to run through 10 St. Mary's players. And uh, unfortunately, one of them collected him. And the free kick will go the way of Nicolaitis. Very courageous play, though, Kilt. Eye on the ball all the way and uh, had to get collected. Kept on going and uh, eventually earned the free as well. And, and well, he I certainly really earned the free kick. <laughs> <laughs> Earning being the... The key well, word. I don't know where the rest of the Wanderers' back line were, but there were certainly half a dozen uh, St Mary's players there that he had to go through, and uh, he's done well. Nicolaitis so. with this relieving free kick on the half-back flank. Coming up on the grandstand side of the ground, up they go in front was Haystrat, and no one can take the mark. It's pushed out there by Wanganin. He gets it down to Hearn. Hearn met heavily as he disposed of the ball around arm. I would say it was the best way to describe that. And the Cusack having a quick look back to make sure that it's been seen, and now he wants to front the umpire and tell him that it was only the forearm. Uh, it's been <laughs> reported, I think, Kill. The, that was the boundary umpire. Why, Bob. Boundary umpire came in then, and uh, we see Dusty Miller at the centre half forward position. We've seen him kick the ball pro prodigiously long earlier today. Let's see if he can get a bit of accuracy with this kick. We Moving haven't seen him too often, Bob. He hasn't done a lot. It's going to go gonna close. Reach. Ball bouncing free. Dave Russell picks it up, has a shot over his shoulder and just offline through for another minor score to Wanderers who move on to eight goals, six, leading St Mary's five goals, seven and we've played approximately 25 and a half minutes of this second quarter. Great game up to date, Kill. Yes, Bob, and there's the kick out now by Hill. Down towards the centre of the ground. Hey, Stratton's got the chance. Bundled out of the way by his own player in miles that time, making a rare mistake, but Anastasia will back him up. Gets the handball across to Rioli. Rioli, down the ground he goes. Leading in the race for the ball is uh, Joe Jeffries of Wanderers, who picks it up well. Well played, Jeffries. Drives it back out. There's no one down there for Wanderers. And in front, Bruno Long taking the mark very easily against uh, Russell, who was giving him 10-yard start. So it's Bruno Long to relieve the pressure for St Mary's, and they've been under some pressure in this quarter. He goes straight across the ground, not really sure why, but he's found a loose player there, and the mark taken by Steve Hodge in off the interchange bench. He gets the ball down towards Willie Rowe. Sorry, it's David Cusack taking the mark. I'm wrong again. Dennis <laughs> Dunn. Dunn. <laughs> Dunn gets the kick away down towards the half-forward line. Miles uh, lets it on towards Stephen Long, who's had a shot for goal from the boundary line, and is just off line again. And one point the result. This goal at half time we see Wanderers leading eight goals, six, 54 points, leading St Mary's five goals, eight, uh, 38 points. Yes, and a good quarter for Wanderers, uh, Bob. Started from uh, a six point deficit, I think it was, at uh, the first quarter change, uh, seven points in fact, and uh, have come back to go away with the lead now, and, and a very handy lead it is, 16 points at this stage, uh, very good. Yes, well, I would have said in the first five to ten minutes of that quarter you would, that uh, St Mary's were in control, they were going with the breeze, they had everything going for them, 
Wanderers seemed to be a little bit dejected. And then all of a sudden we saw Filler do a couple of big things, uh, big marks, big kicks. And, of course, Doug Kelly, who kicked uh, two very valuable goals for them in that quarter. And Wanderers are looking good at the moment. Territory footy from the vault is thanks to these valued partners. We understand that a trip in the Territory can take a little longer than a trip down south. So we'll make sure your car is insured whether you're driving it or someone else. Or you. Or someone else. Or you. Or someone else. Yep, you get the picture. And we get it too, because we're here too. TIO Comprehensive Car Insurance. We're for Territorians. And their mates. Time to escape, cause I'm in need of warmer weather. Sail upon the stream to find there's someplace better. And I'm going far and wide. Ooh. Right Northern Brewing Co., the beer from up here. before making an investment decision. The time to kickstart your business is now. Get your message across with the experienced local TV production team at Kick Digital. Cost effective, rapid turnaround, exceptional service. Kick Digital, television production, energised. Play at the moment, deep in the forward line for St Mary's with... Uh, McCormack uh, getting a little bit annoyed at the attention he's receiving there. He's lost the, the free kick and the 15 metre penalty against him. And the free kick is going to go the way of Wanderers deep in their back pocket. And uh, it'll be Nicolaitis, Paul Nicolaitis, to relieve the pressure for Wanderers, who opened with a very quick goal. Down towards Filler. Filler do dodging around uh, uh, Johnny Long and gets his kick away now. Down over towards centre half forward. Dusty Miller in front, but punched away from him by Anastasia. It comes back towards Hearn, who punches it forward again. Leading in the race for the ball is Brenton Ellis for St. Mary's. Can't pick it up. Will receive the free kick as he got one over the shoulder from Miller. And it's Ellis on the half-back flank. This side of the ground. Kicking now down towards the half-forward line. In front is Filler. Should mark and does. Takes the mark for Wanderers right on the true centre wing. Calling for it is Peter Stennett, but not moving fast enough, not moving anywhere. Filler then on centre wing. Wobbly kick down towards the centre half forward position and a good mark pulled in down there uh, for St Mary's by Brenton Ellis. Brenton Ellis now. Awful kick from Ellis straight to the straight into the arms. Must have been touched, I think, because uh, Wanganeen called to play on. He's got his kick in eventually now down towards the centre wing and a free kick played down the ground. And St Mary's uh, seem a little bit unsettled, Bob. Yes, uh, they seem to have lost their coolness and uh, if they're going to get out of this spot now, they're uh, four goals, nearly four goals behind and it's got to be cool heads. And uh, that little bit piece of play we saw moments before with McCormick is not the sort of thing they need to get out of this situation. There's a long kick and a great mark taken there by Miller. Miller at the true centre-half forward position and he'd be a good 50 metres out. I don't think he'd have any trouble with the distance. It's just the accuracy that uh, he'll be requiring. His earlier kicks have left a little bit to be desired. There's only been a couple of those, Bob. I've been a little bit disappointed with uh, Miller. Heard a lot about him before today's game, and uh, he hasn't done a lot yet. Let's see what he does here. He's uh, nothing right wrong with that boot. one. Straight through the middle. Wanderers opening the third quarter brilliantly now, and that's their tenth goal on the board. They go to 10-6, 66, leading St Mary's 5-8-38. A very handy break indeed to the Wanderers camp, Bob. Yes. Uh, Five minutes into that second quarter, Kill. I don't think you could have predicted this, but it's, uh, Wanderers are playing with a lot more heart and a lot more purpose now. Nicolaitis has got on top of Michael Graham it's on the halfback flank. You can see that the Wanderers players urging them, their teammates on here. And Saints, on the other hand, seem to have lost that little bit of coolness. In the ruck, we see Hay Stratton and, and uh, Smith it is. 
Hey Stratton with a big punch. Comes straight down to Filler again. Filler starting to make his presence felt in the centre of the ground. There's his high kick up the centre half forward. Long almost took it. Came there to a Wanderers player. Tried to get a handball out. Eventually picked up by Brenton Ellis. He tries to short pass across to Miles. It's punched away by Byron Hearn. Who in turn throws himself at the ball. Teddy Liddy picks up. Handballs across there to Stephen Long. Stephen Long short pass there. Looking for his teammate in uh, Dennis Dunn. Dennis Dunn being very quiet today and the ball has beaten him over the boundary line for a throw in on the true wing position garden side of the ground. Big crowd here today, estimated 14,000, Kill, I don't know whether you know that. 14,000 people here at Gardens Oval today, incredible crowd. There's the play, Rafferty's got the kick, driving it up towards the half forward flank. Over the back of the packet goes, first to recover St Mary's, he's pulled off the ball. Play on, says the umpire, picked up by um, Wanderers player there, has a shot at goal, goes across the face of the goal and through for a minor score and that player there was uh, Taylor I think, Jackie Taylor for Wanderers Oh gee Bob, if, uh, if the council wanted to see proof of their uh, efforts down here today is the chance to see it with that mound over there have a look at the people on the mound Cool, there's a, also an additional uh, two stands down here at the uh, both ends of the ground and uh, the, certainly their chocker block full too in the meantime we've seen the play go on Hay stratton has got the mark at centre half back, he short passes across there to Willie Rowe, Willie Rowe bounces once Bounces twice, bulks around his opponent there. There's his kick looking up there in the forward pocket for his teammate there in Cusack, and he's grabbed high and will receive the free kick on the midway between the forward pocket and the half-forward half flank. Cusack plays on quickly, and short pass across there to Peter Burgoyne. Peter Burgoyne straight out in front, centre-half forward, probably 40 metres. Short pass again. There's Michael Graham unattended and he takes the mark no more than 20 metres out on a slight angle. I don't think there are any mistakes made with this one, Kill. Cool. Wouldn't yeah. think so, Bob. I, I'm, I'm one that's sitting here waiting for Michael Graham to explode. I'm fully expecting uh, a, a great burst of uh, football skills from Michael Graham to happen before this game is out and if St Mary's are going to get back into the game they really need it to happen pretty smartly. Well you can tell by the crowd result there that uh, Graham has kicked truly. That's his second goal for the game. And uh, the score now reads Wanderers 10 goals, 7, uh, leading St Mary's 6 goals, 8. Still almost 4 goals the difference, with Wanderers kicking to the city end, and as we've said earlier, the psychological end as far as the scoring goes. Back in the centre of the ground then with umpire Dempsey. In ruck, Hans Hay Strout and doing uh, almost all the ruck work today for St Mary's, and he'll be opposed uh, this time by... Looks like Ross McGorman in onto the ball for Wanderers. Hey Stratton again winning the tap, but it comes back to Rafferty. Rafferty gets a left foot kick out into no man's land. Leading in the race for the ball is Hearn taking a good mark over his shoulder. Running with the ball, and it's always difficult, but he's taken a good mark. And now Steady's play down. Miller is on his own at centre-half full, but the kick's not long enough. Dropping short, and the mark taken in defence for St Mary's by Brenton Ellis. Brenton Ellis, young player in his first season with uh, the senior side doing very well and a 15 metre penalty against Peter Stennett, a stupid foolish a thing to do. Absolutely ridiculous. And uh, that brings Ellis right down to the centre of the, to the edge of the square. He gets his kick away down towards the uh, half forward position. Bruno Long coming through strongly but the ball rebounds into the arms of Billy Ellis who finds Stennett with a well directed pass and Stennett getting away. Stennett now steadying things down and be looking for the big kick into Doug Kelly and why not because Kelly's been making use of everything that came his way and it's a big kick alright it's going to beat the pack Kelly there flew too early it's going close towards the goal off the hands into the post and a minor score resulting to St Mary's to, to uh, take them to Wanderers sorry to take them along to 10 goals 9 now 69 10. leading St Mary's 6-8-44 there's the kick out comes straight to Bruno Long who takes a good mark and it opposed to Stennett. He gets his kick away down along the boundary line, but a good mark taken uh, down there for St Mary's by Alberto Cabilla, who gets the handball on to Long, coming past. Long looking for somewhere to go. Goes short with a good pass, well directed to find uh, Dunn. Dunn on the half forward flank, wide out on the side of the ground. He goes across looking for David Cusack in towards the centre half forward position, and Cusack takes a good mark down there. Well out in front. He's directly in front of goal. He'd be 45, 50 metres out. Cusack taking plenty of time looking for the sticks. It's a good looking kick off the boot. It's got the length but it's just offline and one point only the result to St. St. Mary's now to six goals 9.45 trailing Wanderers 10 goals 8.68 as Harrop prepares to bring the ball back into play 
Four Wanderers with a to to torpedo punt down towards the centre of the ground. It's all St Mary's there. Rioli at the back of the pack, picks up the crumbs, shoots the handball out to Miles, first kick for the half, straight up in the air. Plenty of Wanderers players at the fall of the ball, but over the top, uh, this is St Mary's done, but the free kick will go the way of Smith. David Smith in the ruck for Wanderers and doing a fairly good job today, although Hayes Stratton has won the ruck uh, duel. No, hands down, Bob. Yes, he's won the individual tap-outs, but uh, probably... Um, Smith doing more around the ground. There's his kick going down to the wing position. First to recover, young John Long. Hurried kick over there to Dennis Dunn. Comes down to Byron Hearn and he's pushed off the ball and receives a free kick on, in front of the scoreboard. It plays on quickly, driving the ball across the centre. Young uh, <clears throat> Graham Russell can't take the mark. It comes down to Willie Rowe. He balks around beautifully. Onto his left foot he goes. Kicks out wide for Les Miles. He's got 30 metres. 30 metres to move in. There's his kick driving right up into the forward area over the back of the pack in the back was uh, Billy Ellis was pushed in comes uh, Leskovic he can't pick it up a great skim scrimmage of players eventually knocked out towards uh, who is it Dennis Dunn I think or is it well, David Kuzik David Kuzik uh, behind the play there uh, Bob and it's going to go I think to uh, to David Kuzak and it's uh, Billy Ellis the offender I think on this occasion and a very good chance for St Mary's to score at the moment St Mary's need this goal. Uh, Wanderers jumped them very at the very beginning of this quarter. Got two very quick goals, including one within 15 seconds of the centre bounce. And uh, St Mary's clawing their way back into the game now with a goal through Michael Graham only moments ago. Now in an excellent position to score again with David Cusack, uh, we think, to take the free kick. Saints putting in a little bit more desperation into their game now, fully realising that it was starting to slip away from them. And you've seen the half-forward line of Graham and Cusack and these players putting more into it. And there's Cusack's kick straight through the middle, narrowing that margin again. Seven goals, nine St Mary's, trailing Wanderers, ten goals, eight. And Bob, a uh, couple of the reasons that St Mary's looked so good early on were Miles and Johnny Long, uh, who haven't been seen much uh, since the end of the first quarter, both in that passage of play. And... Uh, They'll need those players firing to get back into the game. And I think uh, the other one that we've mentioned time and time again, we'll keep expecting something from down forward is Michael Graham. Well, he's being uh, marked very closely there by Nicolaitis, but there's the bounce down. It comes down to Rioli. Rioli kicks up forward there looking for... Uh, who is that player there? Can't pick him up. Dunn, it is, uh, it's Dennis Dunn. Dennis Dunn. Short pass again. Dennis Dunn, short pass across to Les Miles at the half forward area good 50 meters out in front straight straight in front though 68 points to 51 that is Wanderers in front by 17 points there's his kick a little Top bit line. to the right through for a minor score moving St Mary's on to seven goals 10 52 trailing Wanderers 10 goals 8 68 fairly important kick I thought Bob that one uh, if they'd have got that one three goals in five minutes and right back into the game all of a sudden and uh, that's just taken the sting out of their uh, fight back somewhat I think as uh, Jeff Harrop now kicks in here he comes back towards the center of the ground is uh, uh, in front is Hay Strat and couldn't take the mark Ellis punches it forward Dougie Kelly's uh, been brought up into the center of the ground probably going onto the ball there he is now, fighting for the ball. It comes out the way of Hearn. Couldn't handle it, but he's going to get the free kick. Taken a bit high, and uh, St Mary's players protesting, but that won't do any good. The, the kick's been paid, and Hearn has the free kick right in the centre of the ground. There's no one on the mark. There he goes now, with a little good-looking kick down in the direction of Stennett, who's made position well with the body. Got first grab, but couldn't hold it. At the fall of the ball, there's a chance for Cabillo if he can pick it up. He does so now, but he's in trouble. Gets the pass across towards Kelly in front. And Kelly's spoiled by Stennett, but I think the mark's been paid anyway. I think there were three St Mary's over the top of him there, Kill, and uh, the umpire made the correct decision. I can't help but think that it's a bit of a panic move by bringing Kelly out at the moment. Well, I think he's been the difference between the two sides, Bob. They've had fairly much equal shares of play, but uh, Kelly's been the difference in finishing things off down there in the goal front. And uh, to bring him out at this stage might be, as you say, a bit of a panic move. Well, here he comes in now. He's a good 50 metres out, 45 degree angle, moving in now. Short pass, no, he's gone for the long one. Looks all right too, close. Bob. Is it long enough? I think it is. It's well, um, oh, it's very close. It's, it's two. two. Yes, uh, the umpire was signalling, uh, signalling touch then, Bob, but no, I thought... No, uh, signalling to the umpire, it's my decision. Oh, leave um, it to me. And uh, he was waiting for the umpire to see if there was any uh, freeze given or anything like that, and then he gave his... Look from here that they could have been behind the line when they got the hands to that. It's a very near thing. Right, uh, that's Dougie Kelly's, <laughs> Dougie Kelly's fifth goal. Wanderers move on to 11-8.
leading St Mary 17. In fact, I think the change is, Bob, that Miller's gone back to full forward and Kelly's come out the centre half forward, which may not be as bad as uh, we thought. I don't think it would pay to put Kelly on the ball, but here we go now with Wanderers coming forward again through Hearn. Gets the handball out to Kelly. Kelly gets around one, shrugs him off, and then puts the big boot into it down towards Miller. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. Miller and Smith. Miller in front. Couldn't take the ball. There's Cabillo coming through. Picks up the crumbs. Stennett trying to kick it off the ground. All he had to do was get a boot to it, but he's hit the post. Uh, what a great piece of pressure football that was. And a good piece of work from Hearn, I thought, to start the ball rolling there on the centre wing. He hasn't been in the play a lot today, but that was a good piece of work. Got a long handball down to Kelly, who uh, did well in using his bulk and strength to shrug Anastasia off and get the kick away and uh, was almost capped off. There's the kick now from Hill, looking short. This could be trouble. Taylor's there for Wanderers. Couldn't bring the ball to ground. It comes out towards Kevin Wonganine. He can't handle it. Wanderers uh, over the top of the players there as Cabillo picks it up brilliantly. Gets it onto the left foot, looking for and couldn't quite find Mahaffey. But it comes back now to Rioli to clear the ball away for St. Mary's. It kicks too long for Miles. It'll come for Ellis. Ellis keeps it in play, gets up now, has plenty of time to steady and get the kick away, looking for Kelly. Kelly's the flyer. Come on, Dougie Kelly. Couldn't pull it down to the ground. It comes down now with Bruno Long trying to force it out. Comes away from the half-back line down towards the centre wing where Ellis has got the first chance. Couldn't take a mark. He should have. Burgoyne with a chance. Puts it down forward now. Here's the handball across. It comes away. St Mary's blow a good chance to score there and it's forced down towards the boundary line on the half-forward line. Two players uh, trying to keep the ball in play but uh, unable to do so and a throw will take place in the left pull forward pocket a little bit of a backhander from Jeffries uh, nothing uh, <laughs> underwater about that one Jack McCormick wants something made of it but can't do it there's the throw in and it's in front Michael Graham flying for it and there's a, a good kick down towards to full forward where Butch Hemming leads in the race for it almost took the mark couldn't handle Michael Graham here's trouble for St. For St. Mary's they've lost it it's coming back the way of uh, Kevin Wonganee to Wanderers leads out well now Picks the ball up and clears Silly it down play. the centre of the ground. And Hearn will take the mark. No, no, Kel. Behind the play, Joe Jeffries, as uh, Wonganeen went to kick the ball, Jeffries went to Shepherd and didn't Shepherd at all. Grabbed the St Mary's player by the back of the Goonsie. Well, he'll be a popular boy tonight because this, is, this may cost him a goal. And they were well on their way down forward. Hearn had taken the mark in the centre of the ground from a good pass from Wonganeen. And uh, Jeffries won't be all that popular. But uh, let's see what happens here. Is it? It's on behind the play. I don't know who did that, but uh, it looks to me like uh, Stephen Long might be in a little bit of bother. She's and uh, she stacks on the mill now. Players coming from everywhere. Hopefully there's not going to be a great deal come out of it, although Stephen Long wants to go on with it. Uh, it seemed to me that uh, he might have had a little bit to do with Leskovic uh, hitting the ground there just before that uh, broke out. Bob, uh, not really sure because... Uh, <laughs> Only just a, a minor altercation, I think you could say. We've one or two of those today, Bob. It's a grand final after all, and uh, temper's likely to flare at any time. But they've lost the free kick, which is the important thing. And Joe Jeffries will breathe a sigh of relief as Wanderers have the chance to bring the ball away. Leskovic gets a kick, but it goes straight to Rioli. He's got plenty of time to steady. It's not a good-looking kick. It's going to drop it straight is. into the arms of Harrop. Harrop away with it now. He gets it down towards the half-back line. It comes off the hands of Miles into the waiting arms of Mahaffey, and he gets the kick away down towards centre-half forward and Dougie Kelly, but a great mark taken in defence uh, for St Mary's by Anastasia. He has the chance now to steady things down. Steve Hodge, I think Steve it was. Steve Hodge it was, I'm sorry. He gets the kick away, finds Cusack leading well down onto the, half, onto the centre wing, takes the mark and goes out wide looking for Dunn, who's got room. Can't take the mark, it's just over his head, and the mark has been paid to David Smith, of Wanderers and he drives down towards the centre wing leading in the race for the ball out there is Alberto Cabillo he gets the ball away down towards the centre wing and it's over the boundary line and uh, throw in to take place right in front of the scoreboard which reads at the moment Wanderers 11-9 75 leading St Mary's 7-10-52 with Hay Stratton and Smith doing battle Hay Stratton again wins the tap and St Mary's have made use of it this time with a good pass coming out from Long out towards Michael Graham is in trouble Gets the handball back towards Long, who's hotly pressed and shoved in the back and didn't get a free kick. And the Wanderers player taken high is Nicolaitis. Very fortunate there, I thought, uh, Wanderers. They, the umpire missed the first free and uh, Wanderers received the second. But there it is. That's the game of football. Wanderers leading 11-9. Leading St Mary seven goals, ten at about 19-minute mark of the third quarter. The big mark taken from behind there by Byron Hearn. Very quiet early on in this game, but starting to come to life now. Driving the ball up to centre half forward, over the back of the pack it goes Davey Russell trying to knock it forward sheer weight of numbers in there big scrimmage of players, no one can get it out eventually Wanderers do give it out to Doug Kelly he handballs across there to Ross McGorman he runs straight into um, <coughs> who is it, Willie Rowe there and he's caught holding the ball Rowe 
Switches the play onto the grandstand side of the ground into the wing position. A good mark taken there by Les Miles. Wasn't too happy with the uh, clip across the year he got from Mahaffey there and a 15 metre penalty implied. There's Miles driving the ball right up into the full forward area. Big pack fly, no one can take the mark. St Mary's players everywhere desperately throwing themselves at the ball and Dempsey, the umpire, says, give it to me, fellas, let's bounce it down and get the Not game going. Not a rugby going. league player, is this? Butch Hemming, the way he tried to force his way through there, looked like a prop forward carrying the ball forward. There's the bounce of the ball right down in the full forward area with Rioli taking possession, dodging cleverly. We lost the ball. Too much. Holding the ball, a decision against uh, Rioli, trying to do too much and well tackled by Paul Nicolaitis in the last line of defence and he's had a great game today when you consider who he's playing on. Yes, he's been one of the key reasons for Wanderers coming back after that first quarter, I think. He's right into everything now. There's his kick right from the full back area going into the square from behind Willie Rowe. Big mark, great mark. Had the drop on his uh, opponent and Graham Russell there. Willie Rowe, usually a prodigious kicker of the ball. This one will be no exception, I'm sure. There it is, it's a huge kick. Right up into the kickoff line it goes, punched down by Harrop and through for a minor score, taking St Mary's on to 7 and 11, trailing Wanderers 11 9. Caught his own full forward napping there, Bob, with That's the length right. of that kick. Uh, Hemming caught well and truly under it, and uh, as a result, a minor score. There's Harrop now down towards the centre of the ground, it's almost reached the centre of the ground. Uh, from behind, it was uh, Hodge into the back of Dougie Kelly, uh, much too early and the free kick will go the way of Doug Kelly, who's come up from centre-half forward to the other side of centre, the defensive side of centre now. Looking for kicks is Doug Kelly, hungry for kicks, and uh, that's a good situation for Wanderers, but uh, as Bob mentioned earlier, we wonder about the wisdom of bringing him away from that goal front. Hungry Dougie for Kelly. premiership also, Kel. Yeah, it just yeah. might be. It's been a long while between drinks for the Wanderers camp. 1958, their last premiership, went so close last year with a great finishing burst, but couldn't take it away from North Down. Today they're leading and hoping that it can stay there for the rest of the game. It's in their half-forward line now. There's a chance for Kevin Wanganeen. Davey Russell punching the ball forward. Plenty of St Mary's players there, including Hay Stratton, who threw it out cleverly. And it's come back the way of Willie Rowe, who's playing a good game for St Mary's. Ever reliable. Willie Rowe now looking to go well down the ground. The lead's on from David Cusack, and that's where it's headed. He's got yards on Leskovic, but he couldn't take the mark, and the ball comes to ground. But both the Wanderers players went to ground leaving Cusack out on his own and well shepherded as well as he gets the short pass away now. Well taken by Dunn. Left half forward uh, right across the far side of the ground. Dodging and weaving now, getting around onto the right foot and putting it back into the centre where Burgoyne's going to be under pressure. It's punched away well by Billy Ellis who took one for his trouble. It's comes out towards Paul Nicolaitis. He can't pick it up but leaves it now for Filler. Filler with a screw punt. We'll deep into the forward line. Here's Dusty Miller in front. Got first grab, couldn't hold it. Ball coming to ground and there's too many St Mary's players there to pick it up but they force the ball away through Hay Stratton now. Hay Stratton with a handball out wide to Bruno, uh, to Hodge it is. Hodge kicking uh, smothered by Phillip and the bounce of the ball will favour Wanderers Paul Nicolaitis. He can't quite pick it up. In there the good handball coming out for Wanderers and again the handball across to Davy Russell in the centre of the ground. He gets a smothered kick away. Comes to uh, Dougie, Dougie Kelly. Kelly. Couldn't miss him, really. Just couldn't think of his name. There's Dougie Kelly. They are driving the ball down in the forward line and a great mark taken down there for Wanderers. I'm not sure who it is. Bobby hasn't moved since he took it, but it was... No, it's Dusty Miller, and uh, he was he was hit. In fact, he was kneed in the head, I'd say, by that St Mary's player as he went yeah, to ground. He's on his way up now. But he'll be all right, I'm sure. By oh, gee, it was a good mark, Bobby. He got himself well out of position and... And uh, uh, long arms came <laughs> out, didn't they? They certainly did. But, and, uh, uh, the scoreboard... Reading 11-9 Wanderers, leading St Mary's at seven goals 11. We've played 23 minutes in this third quarter, and this is a very, very important kick for Wanderers. Well, I don't know what sort of a kick this boy is, uh, Bob, but uh, he's got Peter Stennett right alongside him there. If he's at all groggy for mine, I'd go to the ground and make sure that Stennett gets <laughs> the kick here because uh, this is a very important goal by G. 11-9 uh, to 7-11 at the moment. Another goal now puts Wanderers in a, in a very, very nice position coming up towards three-quarter time. If he's not feeling 100%, or even if he's not much of a kick, uh, Stannett might be the boy. But there's Miller lining him up. Missed it, I think. I think he's offline. No, no, it's through. <laughs> Must have just snuck in, Bob. The yes. goal umpire made a lot of distance across there to the left-hand goal post, but it's through and full points on the board to Wanderers. They go to 12 goals, 9 now. 12 goals, 9, 81, leading St Mary's 7-11, 53. And what a handy little lead that is. Yes, and Dusty Miller's second goal, and uh, maybe that move that... Of Doug Kelly into centre half forward and Miller into full forward is not so silly after, after all because I thought 
it was a little bit uh, quick to do to panic the way they moved him, but uh, they've had the results put on the well, board. I think it's now. not quite so bad as we thought originally. I thought he might have been coming out of the ball, Bob, and I think that would have been a blow. But two centre half forward, not quite so bad as umpire Dean Dempsey bounces the ball in the centre of the ground. Hay Stratton again getting the tap, but once again they can't really get the ball away, and that's been <coughs> the story of the day uh, for most of the time. Some of uh, Hay Stratton's taps have gone right down the throat uh, of Jack McCormick, but most of them, in fact. Uh, have come to nothing and uh, here we are again back in the center of the ground and we'll see if Hay Stratton can do better with this one in fact the bounce doesn't favor him this time and Kelly gets the tap it gives the run of the ball to Davy Russell but he's well cut out uh, by St Mary's John Cusack who gets the ball onto the right foot now and drives it out wide looking for Dunn the big flyer he was there all right but so was Smith to keep the ball away from him punches it towards the boundary line in fact couldn't keep it in play uh, which was bad luck for Wanderers they looked like getting the ball away then but over the boundary line goes Smith and the throw in to take place on the right half forward flank with St Mary's into attack. Hay Stratton again with a punch. This time it comes to Miles. He pushes it out even wider and it's picked up and Here's scooped danger. across to Michael Graham on the run. Graham with a shot for goal from wide out on the flank. It looks all right. Right through the middle for Michael Graham. His third for the day, Bob. Yes, his third kill. Very important goal for Saints too because uh, there's the siren. Three-quarter time siren showing... The, the scoreboard showing 12 goals, 9, 81 points. Wanderers are leading St Mary's, 8 goals, 11, 59 points. That's been a good quarter again for Wanderers. Bob, uh, the Saint Mary, they started the quarter brilliantly, got those couple of early goals and really put the pressure straight on to St Mary's who appeared to have lost their cool. They went for the player, they didn't, didn't make the ball their first objective and they paid dearly for it with Wanderers getting free kick after free kick and a lot of 15 metre penalties. Yes, Kellen, the stage is set for a great last quarter, this huge crowd, it really is the biggest crowd I've ever seen here at Gardens Oval. That new mound we've got at the high school end of the ground now is absolutely chock-a-block full of people and it's a wonderful sight and we should see a great last quarter here. Territory footy from the vault to these valued partners. We understand that a trip in the Territory can take a little longer than a trip down south. So we'll make sure your car is insured whether you're driving it or someone else. Or you. Or someone else. Or you. Or someone else. Yep, you get the picture. And we get it too, because we're here too. TIO Comprehensive Car Insurance. We're for Territorians. And their mates. Time to escape, cause I'm in need of warmer weather. Sail upon the stream to find there's someplace better. And I'm going far and wide. Ooh. Great Northern Brewing Co. The beer from up here. before making an investment decision. The time to kickstart your business is now. Get your message across with the experienced local TV production team at Kick Digital. Cost effective, rapid turnaround, exceptional service. Kick Digital, television production energised. Well, all is in readiness for the all-important final quarter of the 1981-82 season grand final. Wanderers are within 25 minutes of a dream that's taken over 20 years to materialise. They haven't won a premiership since, premiership since 1958 and they're in with a second to none chance right now as the ball is bouncing in the centre of the ground and Hay Stratton and Smith doing battle. Hay Stratton wins the tap down to Rioli. They reckon that when the going gets tough, the tough gets going and here's the chance for Wanderers to really hang on grimly now. They've got a winning lead up. All they've got to do is keep playing football. It's Hodge taking the mark at half-back for St Mary's. He drives out wide now. Down onto the half-forward line. Good mark taken down there by Stephen Long of St Mary's. And forces it in the direction of uh, Michael Graham. From behind it, plenty of flyers. To the ground it comes. Butch Hemming leading in the race. Couldn't pick it up. Neither could Paul Nicolaitis. He's pushed it forward. The free kick's going to go to St Mary's. Uh, very lucky one, I thought, to Rioli. Rioli, nowhere to go. Puts it into no man's land, and that's where it's going to land. But, it, oh... Terrible mistake down there by Harrop. He's dropped the sitter and it's given the chance to Burgoyne. He's made no mistake with it. 
Burgoyne picking up the drop chest mark by Harrop, who had no opposition whatsoever, and that could damage the Wanderers' hopes very much, I would think, Bob. Yes, that was uh, a very, very bad mistake there by Harrop. It's not the uh, sort of football that we're used to seeing from Harrop, but uh, you, s you saw him go to his knees after that goal was kicked, and uh, I don't think you'd have to say any more about the incident. No, uh, hopefully, Bob, it won't, uh, it won't uh, do anything to the morale of the Wanderers camp. They really don't need uh, anything to go against them now. They need to keep pu pushing the ball forward. They don't have to score, but they have to make sure that St Mary's don't. I'm not suggesting that they become defensive but uh, the number one aim must be to keep the ball into their forward line as much as possible. Here's the bounce down in the centre of the ground again. Hay Stratton and Kelly it is. Kelly gets an undecisive tap away. It comes down to Saints. They kick it up towards the centre half forward area. It comes off hands. Miles picks it up. Long handball out there to Stephen Long. Stephen Long, beautiful pass back into the centre of the ground to his teammate there in Teddy Liddy. Liddy being very quiet today. Looks like he's been moved into the forward area. A smart bit of work by Long then, and uh, here's the second opportunity for Saints to narrow this gap. Boy, are we looking for a finish now, Bob, if this goes through? Teddy Liddy's put it through no the middle. Mistakes. Full points on the board for St Mary's, kicked by Teddy Liddy in a great passage of play, and uh, full marks to Miles for the handball out, uh, which was a beauty, right into the path of Stephen Long with a great little pass across to Teddy Liddy, capped it off nicely, and uh, Wanderers now, 12-9-81. The, the deficit has been reduced to only 10 points. And here's a blow for Wanderers. Uh, limping badly is Smith. And he's been the only man to give any opposition at all in the ruck today. Uh, and uh, being assisted down to the other end of the ground. Doesn't look too good at all. Here's Miller onto the ball now. He's in. Oh, he wins the tap. There's Miller. Down to the ground it comes. The free kick is going to go the way of Miller. No, Wanganin. It's Wanganin receiving the free kick. Kevin Wanganin. They need a quick answer to Wanderers. Two quick goals to St Mary's at the start of this quarter have put them right back into the game. Wanderers need to put some more points on the board. There's the kick down towards the full forward area. All St Mary's pushing it out in front to give the run of the ball to Dougie Kelly. Handball's over to Miller. Miller with a shot for goal. It's not a bad looking kick off the boot. It's just off line, I think. No, it's snuck it's through. through. It's snuck through. A great kick and a great passage of play. And once again, Dougie Kelly, the instigator of that. Four to four or five St Mary's... Uh, defenders there to get to the ball and a good handball across to Miller who's put it through. A great great handball there from Kelly. Set, uh, I thought he was setting Miller up but uh, he made room for himself and made no mistake and there was a quick answer from Wanderers. We've played three, maybe four minutes of this final quarter and already three goals have been scored. Two to Saints and one to Wanderers and we've got the scoreboard at 13-9 Wanderers leading St Mary's 10-11. Miller again getting the tap to ground but the ball's coming out now. Here it comes towards Leskovic. He gets the handball out to Wanganin. Kevin Wanganin. Here's Stennett on his own. All he's got to do is mark it. He's taken the mark. Left half forward is Peter Stennett within kicking distance. Only just perhaps but nevertheless a good chance to kick this one. Peter Stennett hasn't had a lot of kicks but as always makes full use of the kicks he gets and here's a chance now. Wanderers would want to see this. I'd love to see this go through. Peter Stennett, plenty of time. The kick's not long enough. Not long enough, but Kelly's in the square. He's got the ball as Kelly. Couldn't get around onto his foot. Now it's on the ground and socket attempt, but it's going to be a kicking in danger infringement against Rafferty. And the free kick will be taken in defence for St Mary's by Anastasia. He's going to kick the ball long, down towards centre half back. Plenty of St Mary's players there, but at the back of the pack it's all Wanderers, including Filler who's got the ball. Filler ducking around onto his right foot, goes out wide. Now looking for Hearn, who's overrun the ball and left it behind. There is Anastasia again with the handball across to Rioli. Rioli's in trouble, went to ground, could be caught, but couldn't hang onto him was Dave Russell, but he's fought back well. Got the ball to ground, and there's Russell in again getting the handball out. There's no one there for Wanderers, but well done, Davey Russell. And the kick away down the ground. Into the centre of the ground as Leskovic left it behind. Ellis is there to back him up, but Leskovic's done it himself. Got the kick away. Out wide and again, it's all St Mary's. And uh, taking the mark Athanasia. out there is uh, Athanasia. Athanasia again. And uh, having a good game is Anastasia, I think, in the, in the back line, Bob. And there haven't been a lot of winners down there. Out wide it comes. Michael Graham in front. Got the first grab, but couldn't keep hold of it. Willie Rowe backs him up beautifully. Gets the handball away, and it's a nice one. Right into the arms of Miles. He goes short. Beautiful pass to Burgoyne. Burgoyne, plenty of time, left foot, swinging it back in towards the centre of the ground. Here's a chance for Stephen Long, who gathers it and fires right across the face of goal. In fact, out of bounds on the full. Took a fraction too long, wanted to make sure of it, and just got bumped as he was about to kick, and that's been enough to throw him off line. 
right across the face of goals and Wanderers breathe a sigh of relief. They lead at the moment, 13-9, 87 to Wanderers, 10-11, 71, 16 points to difference. There's the kick out. Right down the ground it comes, a good looking kick, but off hands is a chance for Michael Graham. Puts it out in front of him, was held without the ball and the free kick will go to Michael Graham. Left half forward flank. And boy, if this bloke breaks into the clear, St. Bears will come back with a rush. Two goals, five the difference, Kill. Plenty of pressure out there, a lot of pressure, and the ball couldn't be in better hands than Michael Graham's. If anyone has got the experience to kick this goal, it's Michael Graham. He's a long way out, Bob. It's going to take some sort of kick. He's taking plenty of time with it now. Moving in. Mahaffey on the oh, mark. That's a shocker. Shocking kick. Try to kick it too hard, I think. Might off come hand. off, though, as McCormack with a chance couldn't pick it up. C comes out to Kevin Wanganin, who'll bring the ball away for Wanderers. Down the centre of the ground. Kelly's in position, takes the mark. Right in the centre of the ground. He's a long way down, and he hasn't got anything to kick to at the moment. There's no lead on offer, so he goes high and long. Davy Russell out in front. Couldn't take the ball. Comes to ground. There's Stennett swooping on it. He gets the handball away, but it's come back towards Wanderers. Cusack clearing the ball away. Down the centre of the ground. There's R Willie Rowe with a handball out. Over to Miles. Miles has gathered it well. Steadies. Fires the long one in. Here's a chance. Harrop's got the position and took the mark. A good mark in defence for Harrop. And a 15 metre penalty will help as well. 15 metres against the St Mary's camp. Bringing Harrop out towards the half-back line. He's off now. Gets the kick away. Plenty of big men out here, including Miller. Miller's got the first grab and the second. A good mark, Miller. On the centre wing. And Wanderers coming back, answering the challenge that's been well and truly issued by the St Mary's camp at the beginning of this final quarter, 1981-82 season, heading for a close, and boy, is it boiling up, Bob. Two goals, five the difference, Kells. That's, uh, we've played seven, maybe eight minutes of this last quarter. Miller taking plenty of time with his kick. He's right in front of the Hunter Harrison grandstand. This I'd be taking plenty now. of time if I was him Up too, Up goes Bob. the centre-half forward. In position is Kelly. Can he mark it? Almost. Play on, says the umpire. Comes to Taylor. Left foot kick going right up into the face of goal and just off line for a minor score to Wanderers, taking them on to 13-10, leading St Mary's 10-11. Started to come back, Bob, but didn't come back enough, and a minor score only, but uh, Wanderers will be happy enough with that to keep the ball up in their forward line. Still plenty uh, of time, uh, though, Kill. Hodge gone back to full back now for St Mary's, and he's kicking out now, looking four miles, is well out in front of Filler to take the mark. Uh, Haystrat moving down the ground, Miller getting across there now. There's the kick from Miles. Down towards centre half forward. In front is Leskovic. Got the first touch. It come to Michael Graham. He couldn't do anything with it. Comes back to ground. Plenty of Wanderers players in there. They've got the ball out, but the kick is a bad one. It'll come to Willie Rowe, who muffed it. Came back now to Kevin Wanganin through Hearn. On towards centre half forward. The drop is there for Hill. Couldn't take it. Kevin Wanganin again. Hurried kick out looking for Davy Russell. He's got the position. He's got the pace. Couldn't get to it the first, though, and it's uh, Cusack, Johnny Cusack, picking it up on the left foot. Out wide to Miles, who made position well again. And uh, could be a 15-metre penalty, not paid. And uh, Miles on centre wing with the ball for St Mary's. Miles starting to make his presence felt too, Kill, cool, really putting everything into this last quarter for the Saints. After a brilliant first quarter, Bob, and now it's uh, Miller who'll have plenty of time to clear the ball away from the back line for Wanderers. Running around like a rover. That's a big kick down. It's, this is where Wanderers have got their problem at the moment. Uh, they're, they're missing uh, a forward to finish things off with Kelly down on the centre-half forward area. When it gets in deep, they need someone down there to finish it off. And uh, they've got Miller on the ball because Smith's on one leg and Peter Stennett uh, down in the goal square but they've got no one to take the big mark down forward like they had earlier and uh, although they're getting the ball down there they can't finish it off Miller again beats Hay Stratton but it comes to Michael Graham onto the ball now comes out wide there's a chance for Willie Rowe it's too long for him and there's Roscoe McGorman coming through Ross McGorman will get the free kick held when not in possession and, and too high uh, the tackle too kill too high and Ross McGorman uh, to the wrath of the crowd taking the free kick halfback flank for Wanderers there's McGorman's kick down to the centre of the ground. Plenty of Wanderers players. There are a mile of them. Fillers dropped an easy mark. <laughs> Davy Russell's hit the panic button and thrown the handball straight into the arms of Johnny Cusack, and he bounces the ball back to the forward line for St Mary's. Leskovic leads in the race for it. Doesn't really want it badly enough. Couldn't pick it up. Pushes it out forward. Ponce Capillo picking it up and in trouble. Gets it out eventually, but it's come straight back to Michael Graham. Having a run on the ball now. He's on the right foot. He's six it in there, but there's a chance for Harrop, who's in front. But uh, Burgoyne tapped it away from him, and well done, Harrop. To out intercept, of bounds on uh, the full. He's come off his boot. He's gone out of bounds on the full, Kill. Well, that's Most bad luck for Harrop because uh, he did well to get back there as Burgoyne chipped in. Was going to push the ball across into the face of goal where there were a number of St Mary's players waiting and not a solitary uh, defender. 
But Burgoyne on the boundary line, the free kick on the short pass, and it's Miles unattended in front of goal. This is and where uh, the lift is coming from, I feel. Kel Miles is running right up and down the ground and uh, creating havoc. Wanderers uh, Cinnamon, who is Peter Filler, is just letting him go. And uh, that should never have occurred from the Wanderers defence, that lead. There's Miles moving in now. There's his kick. Straight through the middle it is. You couldn't miss the Mary's move on to 11-11. Trailing Wanderers 13-10. So we're back now to 11 points the difference. St. Mary's is certainly throwing the challenge out. And the Wanderers camp dying a little bit. A uh, couple of panic moves there. And I think the, the one that really cost them that goal has to be Davy Russell's uh, wild hand pass uh, over his shoulder yes. straight to Johnny Cusack and bang, straight in, it's gone. It's and easy uh, for us to criticise from up here, Kill. Oh, we're not, we're not uh, under the same sort of pressures. And that's what it was. It was a, pre a pressure mistake. Here's the ball back in the centre now. Umpire Brimson and... And Dempsey, today's umpire's done a great job too. There's a bounce down. Miller and Haystraten. Haystraten gets it, comes down to Rafferty. He tries to get onto his left foot. Handballs across there to Cabillo. Cabillo running free. Kicks the ball up long into the half forward area. There goes Stennett. He can't take the mark. Comes down to Long. Long drops it. Big scrimmage of players. Saints desperate to defend there. And the umpire says, give it to me, fellas. We'll bounce it midway between full forward and centre half forward right in the centre of the ground. One of the things we talked about at three-quarter time, Bob, was uh, the, the idea of perhaps putting Michael Graham onto the ball. It looks like it might have happened. And he's well down now. It's an attempted goal, attempted soccer goal there by Wanderers. A great piece of play there by Brenton Ellis too. Desperate football. Well, Smith's also on one leg, and I think he had trouble. Uh, he did well to try and get anywhere near it because he's, he's limping very badly and uh, hasn't got up yet as uh, Hodge takes the kick in straight to Hill. Hill will mark well out in front of Stennett. And he has the chance to take this ball right down into the forward line again. There's his kick out wide. Stephen uh, Lydia is in the race for the ball. He takes the mark, plays on quickly. Sends it across towards Miles and Filler. Filler got first touch, couldn't hold it. Ponce Capillo's gathered the crumbs. He gets a kick away. It's not a good one. It's going to fall straight into the arms of the St. Mary's defenders. And they'll bring the ball away again. Out wide it comes to McCormick. McCormick dodging around now, getting onto his right foot, goes the short pass to Willie Rowe. He'll take the mark at this centre is half danger. forward. This is danger. If Rowe has a shot, he could put this right in the teeth of goal. He's right on the edge of the centre square, Kel. And he's got, and he's got uh, Stephen Long on his own in the goal square, would you believe, at this stage in a grand final? There's the kick. <laughs> and a great mark taken by Hemming, but there's a push in the back being ruled against the St Mary's. <laughs> The Saints crowd not liking it, but uh, the umpire was right there, and the um man in white is always right, they tell me. There's the relieving free kick to be taken by Harrop on the last line of defence for the Wanderers team. 12 points of difference it is. There's his kick coming right out to centre-half back. In front is Filler, can't take the mark. Recovers well. In comes Michael Graham. His handball was smothered. Willie Rose got it, holding the ball, I would say. Well done, Play on, Russell. Says the umpire. Nicolaitis playing on quickly. Short pass there, a good pass to... to Peter Mahaffey on the wing position. Mahaffey also playing on short pass to Nicolaitis. Nicolaitis has run right down from the back line. He's now on the half forward flank right in front of our broadcast position here. Dougie Kelly leading but Nicolaitis ignoring that and goes for the big kick. It's going to drop well short oh. and uh, Taylor stepped out of the way for Wanderers. Uh, fell for the three card trick straight into the arms of Hodge who clears it wide out to Bruno Long. Eddie Cabillo doing, giving chase to Long but Long's got support in the form of Johnny Cusack. He couldn't get it across to him and has lost the ball, but uh, Cusack's done well to pick up the crumbs. Gets it on forward now, and away goes St. Mary's, down through the centre of the ground with a short pass, looking out wide to find Burgoyne, taking the mark and playing on quickly on the left uh, foot, driving it in towards the goal square. There's Stephen Long on his own. And uh, Stephen Long has taken the mark in the goal square with St. Mary's, trailing by only 12 points at the moment, and this should halve the margin. 15 minute mark of the last quarter two goals a difference one goal a difference now Stephen Long fairly casual uh, <laughs> to say Bob very casual <laughs> player but a great player also what a great comeback by Saints six points a difference 15 minutes played appro approximately 10 minutes to go that's uh, the second time in the last couple of minutes Bob that Stephen Long's been found on his lonesome in the goal square uh, fortunately for Wanderers on the first occasion the ball didn't travel in that direction but that time Stephen Long it got away from his opponent, uh, Russ McGorman, standing in the goal square on his own and uh, was untroubled to mark and goal. So Back only one straight kick, the difference now. Six points only and the way St Mary's are coming home.
I don't know. I don't think uh, Wanderers are going to be able to hold on here, but there's Hearn with the chance. Comes away from him. Teddy Liddy pinches it. Gets it down forward. Billy Ellis in the way and will Great be paid mark. the mark Great at mark. the second grab. And a good relieving mark for Wanderers, but uh, Wanderers need a lift at the moment. They want a couple of goals quickly, Kill. Uh, we've played 17 minutes, one goal in front, and they're kicking to the high school end of the ground. There's Ellis's kick going across the centre. It is in front with St Mary's, and uh, Doug Kelly infringed there and pushed Hay Stratton in the back, the umpire says, and he'll have the relieving kick for Saints. Round about centre-half back area. He'll obviously kick this ball long. No, he has a short pass in there for Michael Graham. Michael Graham running free again. The danger player, as far as Wanderers are concerned. He's on the wing position. Saints players running everywhere at the moment, sensing this victory can, is theirs if they put it in. There's Graham's kick. Not a particularly good one. From the back of the pack, Harrop nearly took the mark. Play on, says the umpire. All Saints again. Stephen Long is tackled high. Tackled high. Another minor disturbance down there, but nothing very serious. And Stephen Long has the free kick right on the boundary line in the forward pocket for St Mary's. Six points the difference it is in the grand final. 1981-82 grand final. Stephen Long. Very difficult goal if he can kick it. It's awful close, Bob. Oh, he's kicked it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a little bit of jubilation out there now from the St Mary's camp. Uh, the streamers flying down the far end of the ground and the traditional St Mary's area under the tree behind the goals at the cemetery end of the ground and there's a very very happy St Mary's crowd as they've drawn level started the quarter with uh, quite a deficit and have fought back brilliantly in this last term Wanderers uh, answered the challenge initially but are now being swamped by Wanderers scores a dead level here's the bounce down Miller and Hay Stratton Miller gets a sorry Hay Stratton gets a great tap backwards to Long Long drives it up into the forward area in front is uh, Jock McCormack and he's stupidly disposed of also by uh, the Wanderers back player and the 15 metre penalty imposed and now he definitely will score kill no doubt about it uh, before there could have been some question whether he could have kicked the distance. Well, in a similar situation at the other end of the ground, Bob, when Jeffries uh, infringed, fortunately for him, St Mary's made a blue to get him out of it, but this time, well, they might have done it again. It's off line. Off One point, though. I thought it might have gone out on the full. But that puts St Mary's in front, and that's the first time they've been in front since early in the second quarter, Bob. Yes, uh, they led by seven points at quarter time, and then Wanderers seemed to take charge after the ten minutes of that second quarter. There's a kick out by Harrop. It's Easy mark, dropped there by Liddy. Comes down to Bruno Long. Long's left foot kick is marked up in the forward area there by Hemming, but the umpire has ruled the ball... Sorry, the ball must come back, and a free has been paid to John Rafferty of Wanderers. I couldn't see what it was for, but uh, they are out there. We're not, so it must have been right. There's Rafferty. Left foot kick. Not a long one. Looking for Filler. Filler's under a lot of pressure there. He's tripped at the last minute, and the umpire's seen it. And he'll get the free right in the centre of the ground. Right, oh, gee, this could be an important kick, Bob. Yes. Uh, there's plenty of time, I know, but if Wanderers can hit the front again, uh, that just might be what they needed. There's Filler's kick. Not a bad one. Right up into the centre half forward. The players set themselves at the back. Over the back of Packet goes. Stennett, left foot shot, off line, through for a minor score. Scores dead level again. 90 points apiece. We've played uh, 19 minutes of this final quarter. Cool. Coming. What do we do if it's a tie? Coming up the time on. Well, I don't know, Bob. I'll still be here next week. I wonder yeah. if they want to go back out and have another go. Players must really be starting to feel it now. Desperate to get that edge, to get the lift, to enable the team to go on to victory. Wanderers, of course, not having won one since 1958. There's Hill's kick. Short pass looking there for uh, uh, Manny Rioli. It's picked up by young Eddie Cabillo. Cabillo's kick is smothered off the boot, is it? No. High in the air it goes from the behind. It's tapped down to to Cabillo again. Cabillo's left foot kick up in the centre of goal it goes. Kelly running free, tries to kick it off the ground to Stennett. Eventually a relieving kick taken there by Saints. Knocked off the ball, in they come. Players are really throwing themselves into it and the umpire will bounce the ball about 15, maybe 20 metres out Stennett, from the... Stennett was a bit unlucky then. Bob had an attempt at the soccer goal and got just, just the edge came of the boot. The side of the boot. And uh, didn't quite make the distance, but uh, it was a good attempt at a flying soccer goal. Here's Cabillo again. It's Eddie Cabillo putting the ball right into the goal square. Here's Cab at the back of the pack of Stennett and... Uh, Stennett and Kelly both flaming the mark and uh, umpire Dempsey saying, sorry, chaps, one of you would have been quite enough, but two of you is too many over the boundary line. Let's have a throw in right alongside the point post. 
Left full forward pocket. Wanderers into attack with the scores locked together into time on in the final quarter of the 1981-82 grand final. Stennett with a chance. He's caught with the ball, holding the ball against Peter Stennett. Tried to do too much, tried to break away from the pack when he didn't have room. And he's been caught. Alberto Cabillo with the chance now to bring the ball out of defence for St Mary's. The lead on from Miles in the centre of the ground. It's dropping in his direction. It's straight through his hands, but there's no one there for Wanderers to pick it up. Down at the back of the pack is Davy Russell pushing the ball out. Scooped it out, in fact. Smith got a hand to it. Out to Hearn. Hearn couldn't do anything with it. Comes back now to Cabillo. He's lost it again. Holding the ball. It must be. No, it's not. In front is Michael Graham trying to pick it up. In fact, trying for the free kick. Couldn't get it. Willie Rowe with a handball out to Rioli. And the St. Mary's are a chance to go forward now. There's the kick from uh, Rioli down to the half-forward line. Plenty of flyers there. Plenty of Wanderers defenders. Ball forced towards the boundary line and over the boundary line. Throwing to take place on the right half-forward flank. And now it's St. Mary's turn to go into attack with the scores. Locked together at 13-12-90 apiece. 21 minute in. mark kill well into time on here we come now with Ra oh Miller taken very high by Rowe and a free kick will go the way of the Wanderers uh, Rusty, Dusty Miller down there on the half back line <coughs> he's looking a little bit uh, groggy a little bit he's taken, ruffled up taken a couple of those knocks today hasn't been one day that he'll be all that happy about but there's the kick from Miller down towards the centre of the ground the flies filler he got the punch away over the back of the pack there's a Davy Russell breaking clear for Wanderers driving the ball long Stennett's in front in behind him comes Hodge and uh, also oh. Kabila, Dave muffed it. It's coming out through Hodge for St Mary's. It gets the right foot kick down to the half forward line. In front is Cusack with one hand, couldn't pull it in. It's uh, Russell, Graham Russell this time. Out of wide it comes. Kevin Wanganen scooting very slowly towards the ball, but he's finally got there in time to get possession of it. Oh. He's got to be caught for holding the ball here. Had hold of his arm. It was, hold, the umpire couldn't see it, Kill. It should have been holding the ball, lucky yeah. one. We've got a better view than him from up here, but there's the uh, tap down by Haystrat and Michael Graham leads it. Couldn't get it away, but Billy Ellis has got it. Gets it over the head of the pack. This leaves the run of the ball for Wanderers. Kicked off the ground cleverly, but straight to Davy Russell. 23 minutes played. There's Davey a short Russell pass. out towards Stennett. He's in front. Couldn't take the mark. Hodge is there again. He's coming to the game. Got the handball away, but straight to Eddie Cabillo. Eddie Cabillo driving in towards the goal. He must score. It's a goal! No, no it's, it's a not. Point. It's not line. What a good attempt that was from Eddie Cabillo. It looked good. The crowd thought it was good. The goal umpire doesn't agree with them. One point the difference now in favour of Wanderers. We've paid four and a half minutes of time on as the kick comes out from Hodge. High flyer is Filler. Couldn't get the second grab. Hey, Stratton tapping it away from him. Plenty of players in there. Eddie Cabillo doing a lot of work in these last few minutes. Seems to have legs that the others have left behind. And it's umpire Dempsey to move in and bounce the ball on the right half forward flank. Hey, Stratton in ruck. Got the tap away, but it's come out towards Hearn. He's just got to gather it and get a kick. He's got the handball on to Kevin Wanganeen. Wanderers going forward. Kevin Wanganeen across the goal towards Rafferty. Rafferty with a sit. He got a hand to it. Couldn't hold it. Comes to ground. He's going to be caught with it. Holding the ball, it is, against Rafferty. And the relieving free kick to St Mary's, Bob. <laughs> We've played 25 minutes now, 25 minutes, Wanderers in front by a point. A great comeback by the Saints. Waiting for the ball to be to delivered back to Ellis. Great tackle there by Ellis. Umpire setting the players. Players desperate now. One point in front, Wanderers. 25 minutes we've played. In front was Michael Graham. Great mark taken. Play yes, umpires paid it too. I thought uh, the Wanderers players thought it was play on. Roger, there can't be long to go, Bob. We've played five minutes now into time on, and uh, Wanderers leading by the single point as Michael Graham goes across the ground to find uh, Anastasia. There's the siren! It's all over, one point! Wanderers have won the grand final. Have a look at this crowd go berserk. Wanderers by a solitary point. After five minutes of time on in the final quarter, Wanderers have fallen in by the narrowest possible margin. One point, Bob, what a result. I've never seen anything like this, Kel. I've been in Darwin a long, long time. I've played in football right round Australia and I've never seen a scene like this. It's been 24 years since Wanderers have won a grand final. They've won it by the barest of margins and did everybody get their money's worth down here today? There's a, approximately 14,000 people here, of which I think 5,000 have come onto the ground and they are in absolute jubilation. And One. why wouldn't they be? Wanderers have deserved their win today. They played in front most of the day. They led from early in the second quarter until 
well into the final quarter when they were finally headed it looked like they were gone but they came back very very strongly they kept the ball in their forward line they were unable to make majors but they kept the ball there they kept peppering the goal drew level and then eventually got the winning point and what sort of a result is that wanderers it's a fairyland for them they came from nowhere last year to get up and run us up last year having looked like a possibility with uh, only minutes to go today it's been uh, a great effort by Wanderers to come back after they looked like they were gone. I couldn't believe it. Was just, we just kept jumping off the ground, you know, jumping up and down like, I don't know, idiots, I suppose. <laughs> but it's just a good feeling because you know how much work you put in and how much the committee people put in and the Wanderers people. And it was like, all of a sudden, everybody that was in Darwin, even up from South or wherever, they were there and they were Wanderers people. Because all you could hear right around the ground, and I, I suppose you could hear it for, for a few kilometres away too, they were just screaming at it, eagles, eagles, all right through the game. It was just made your hair stand up and you knew you had good backing, you know, and the players were out. We had a few players all very close, uh, like Ponce Cabello, he was in everything. Him and Kevin Wanganin, who both came over from St Mary's, they just put everything into the game. And uh, and, and the other, the third one was... Aru Kibilla, Eddie Kibilla, Ponzi's young brother. Those three players. Um, Doug Kelly was close. He was close because he, he, he got really fit when I went over to Wanderers. He got, got strict orders that he had to start training a month before everybody else. <laughs> and he lost a lot of weight. So he was just running around like a young bloke, you know. It's really good. No, he's a good footballer. He's really good. And he put in a real good season and he, he was a good, hard, fair footballer. Yeah. I think he deserved it on the day. Oh no, when, when Wanderers play, I'll, I'll barrack for them against everybody because I've still got that good feeling there for them, you know. And if they play playing Buffaloes, well, I seem to get more enthusiastic for Wanderers because Buffaloes didn't want me as a coach, you know. They gave it to this guy from Victoria. So I said, OK, we'll see. And then I, I copped a lot of uh, flack saying that, oh, look, you're not going to do it. Who do you think you are, you know? You're this and that. We'll see. And we did. They didn't beat us. After that first season, Buffaloes, for a long time. Quite a, uh, I think it was a few seasons. Yeah. Because I used to rev them right up. <laughs> yeah, really fantastic feeling. I, I'll never forget the, the way I felt when I was coaching the club and in the club. But the Wanderers boys, I don't know, they just got it. They just got it. It's been planted into the club, and I think it's going to be there for a long time to come. <laughs>